What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, we've got a fun show for you today. We are talking about social media. We're talking about the new way of, uh, of prospecting, the new way that real estate's really being done. Uh, we're going to talk about some, uh, we, might talk, we might talk about some objections here. Uh, we've got some uh, some interesting ones to pull from the Lead Gen Subscription Objections Facebook group. And then as well, we are taking your questions live. So if you're watching us live on here on Facebook, you can put your comments and questions right below here in the comments, and we will bring them to Gregory, uh, the junior grandmaster himself during the show. First of all, you're in the co-pilot seat sporting your, uh, your, your, I think you're, you got some, maybe you signed an endorsement deal or something like that, but you're literally <laughs> dressed to go Loganitas. What is going on? <laughs> when you love something, you rep it, man. I got to say, you know, it, you know, it's, you know, it's funny because, uh, I was, I was just talking to my audio engineer today and we we're talking about endorsed artists. So in the music world, if you, if you are a drummer and you use a particular drum, uh, like a drum company, a lot of times that company will come to you and they'll say, well, hey, we'd like to give you free stuff in exchange for you, uh, you know, being well known as being a great musician and uh, and people will see you and they'll want to buy our stuff because they see you playing it. Mm -hmm. So, Greg, have you reached the status of professional drinker to the point where you have, <laughs> uh, are you now an endorsed drinker? <laughs> yeah, Matt, I'm, I'm, those are my aspirations as a young, young boy. And, you know, someday those will be coming true and, and you know, Budweiser and Miller and, you know, Lagunitas will all be knocking at my door, but not yet, Matt, not yet. I, yeah. I practice. Double, so you're, uh, two you're practice on the days pro, you're on the pro-am circuit, so pro -am to speak. Pro-am circuit, yes. Yeah, okay. I haven't, I, don't, I haven't been able to put away a 24-pack in one day yet uh, in one sitting. But once I reach that, that's minimum statutes to going pro. When you go to 36 beers a day, you are pro above that. While there are just titles and awards and accolades for the fat people all around the world going, oh, look at that beer belly on him. He must, oh, that's a gold medalist right there. Mm. See, I saw him at the Olympics last year, beer drinking. Oh, <laughs> but no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see you today. You're, you're fully dressed in Lagunitas gear. So let's uh, let's jump in with a question here real quick. This uh, this caught my eye and, and, and made me laugh. So this is from Jamal Gibbs. He says, here's the objection. I don't need to own a home right now. I'm waiting until the afterlife to build my paradise. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then there's a nice padded room for you, sir. <laughs> well, I think, I think <laughs> that was a reference to essentially it's the same thing as they're going to carry me out of here in a pine box. I'm waiting for the afterlife to dream, build my dream home. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I honestly don't even have a rebuttal. I just be like, swing, <laughs> so, two, two thumbs up, player. I, I, crazy villain. You're the mayor. I got to go. Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> oh, Anyways, man. No objections on that one. Just be like, hey, if he's not going to go anywhere, then okay. Bye. See you later. Bye, Felicia. Keep on yeah. moving. Yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, really, the only comeback, I think, for that, <laughs> other than laughing, because it is funny. Uh, it's just to say, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been hearing that a lot. I mean, people love the neighborhood. I mean, obviously you've been here for quite a while. Sounds like you have no plans to leave, right? Nope, no plans, you know? And at that point, if you wanted to, you could follow up with a, you know, like if, if something where, you know, hypothetically, if something ever caused you to, to want to move, like you have grandkids in another state or something like that, is there anything on the horizon that you could see coming down that would, that would cause you to pack up and, and head out of Dodge? You can ask him that. You can also go on the other side. A lot of the times we don't ask the other question. Okay, since you're going to be sticking around, and I'm glad that you are, we love the fact that we have good people in the neighborhood like you. Have you thought about buying any investment properties? Have you t thought about maybe taking some of the equity and going and buying something that can offset your current mortgage uh, by, by re your reoccurring income? Uh, do you know anyone in the neighborhood that might be thinking of pulling up stakes and, and taking advantage of these high prices right now? Um, you can go down those paths with them yeah. because you can't make them not want to. You can't make them move. So if they don't want to move, cool. But you also, it's like going in and having a conversation with the hot chick at the bar and be like, hey, baby, want to get married? She's like, uh, who are you? Uh, what is your first name? <laughs> you you got to build the rapport a little bit. And you and I had this discussion uh, off air that's about, so about this very thing. Oh, it's amazing how that works that way. I love how things come back around. Uh, but it reminds oh, me of something that uh, Beverly Ruffner said. So I, I had her on uh, Level Up with Greg Harrelson. The Bevanator. Uh, we love the Bevanator. She was fantastic. She always has um, great energy and great content. And one of the things that she said that really stood out to me was uh, she said you can't um, – there's really there's only one reason why somebody doesn't move forward with a real estate transaction, which is that the opportunity doesn't match their expectation. So yeah, we, so the 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 only reason they don't move forward, yeah, is that the opportunity doesn't match their expectation. Yeah, it's very true. It's very yeah. very true. 
So the, the, the way that it applies in this particular situation is that we look at it going, okay, well, they, they don't want this opportunity right now. So I need to find somebody that does and like, great, moving on down the road. And, and that's true. There, there's a certain level of truth to that. There's other people that they've already decided the opportunity is worth it and they're moving forward. And if you can get in front of them at the right time, they'll move forward with you as their agent. But she did point out that part of our job and where we bring value at, in real estate is to bring, you know, to, to clarify the opportunity and then to bring opportunities that they may not have thought of that gets them off the fence, right? And so, yeah, you're right. You've always said you, you can't force someone out of a home and you're 100% right, but you gave a couple of great examples. You can draw you them can out. You can draw them out. Yes, and the, the drawing them out goes back to what Beverly said about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's creating this picture of an opportunity in their mind, right? that is maybe different than what they expected, but all of a sudden gives them what they're looking for in a, in a, in a way that they didn't expect, right? You know, yeah, the thing is that when the, when it comes to disappointment in, in, in life, in, in every circumstance, and this is the book, the Unfuck Yourself, he went deep in on this one thing. He said, the reason there's disappointment in life is because it doesn't meet up, the experience that you're having in whatever you're doing doesn't meet up with your expectations, therefore it falls short. That gap between what you expected and what you really have, it will depend on how disappointed you are based in that gap. Yeah. And so if we can go into prospecting, if we can go into sales, if we can go into all these different things with zero expectations, then there's going to be zero disappointment because there's no gap, a gap of pain. Mm -hmm. And when I really started thinking about that, I'm like, that is so incredibly amazing. So if, if people were to go into doing prospecting or working their timeline or working their, working their sphere of influence, but they had no expectation to do business with anybody, but they just went into it and just plowed through it, put their head down to the grindstone and just went for it, that when they got the business, they'd have only elation. No, no, no depression, mm -hmm. but people don't do that. They expect their best friend to work with them. They expect to get a lead every day. They expect blah when it doesn't happen the way they think it should or in the quantity that they think it should, then there's disappointment and heartache. Yeah. So all we have to do is take away that expectation le le level and layer on us and we can be free to be our best version of us out in the universe. Like yes. I had expectations. Um, you know, uh, for myself and a few things this year, and I haven't quite met those goals. And once I read that book on fuck yourself and he went deep on it with his Scottish accent, that was a brutally bad Scottish accent. So my apologies to all Scots. Um, and he goes deep on it and I, and I open up my mind. I'm like, all I have to do is just go do all I have to do is just go and then let the chips fall where they may and be ecstatic about when they land. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we can just start doing yeah, that, expectations do are interesting, aren't they? Yeah, because I mean, we, we do this to ourselves, and of course, we run up against it all the time with with clients, which is the 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 best thing we could ever do for ourselves in business in terms of making life easier on ourselves when dealing with clients is a hundred percent all linked to expectations. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And that that kind of comes back into what we're talking about on on the prospecting and, and social media and the new version of real estate. I, I am predicting right now in less than three years, prospecting calls are going to be dead. It's going to be Middle Earth, Sahara Desert on a hot right. day, just bone dry out there. And that's why we've got to come up with different, interesting, creative ways to get in front of our prospects on a consistent basis. I mean, I was just talking to my boy, Mike, who, Matt, you're using him. I'm using him to grow our Instagram accounts. He and I, he's, he's given us, um, he, anyone who joins our EXP team, he's going to give them a month free of Instagram growth. And then you can get it for free you know, as it goes down the road, but there's some stipulations involved. But I think through social media, you know, direct messages, I think through video, I believe that since, did you know that Snapchat is on the way down, like growth-wise, when it comes to monthly and yearly view counts? It's a mass uh, shift. Urban. Doesn't surprise me. That's interesting. Mass shift over to Instagram. It's only a matter of time until Instagram is going to be, their view counts are in the, oh, dude, I actually have it pulled up on another <laughs> video here. <laughs> I might just go back and figure out where those stats are. But it's it's insane on what the what the view counts are. So, I mean, with when it comes to you, I mean, Insta is coming out with uh, video or audio clips now. Here it is. So Facebook stories, check this out. Um, stories product, story product daily active users. These are the different stories. Facebook okay. stories, um, these are all May of uh, May of 18, 150 million Facebook stories a day. Instagram stories, 
this is November of 2017, so it's back a little bit, 300 million Instagram stories a day. WhatsApp, this is May of 18, 450 million you know, stories a day or uses a day. Facebook Messenger stories, 70 million. Snapchat, all of Snapchat, 191 million. Hmm. Face, you know, Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp just crush Snapchat on their on their usage. That's interesting. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, it, it's not. Um, it's an interesting category war to watch. Like once you've read "Play Bigger" by Chris Lockhead, like it mm. really like you start to see these things through a different lens, and you realize that um, that Instagram, I think, is on its way to becoming kind of a category king of its own instead and, and not just in the sense of it's like Facebook's little brother and not not in the sense that it has to take Facebook out because Facebook is the category king of social media. Oh, but yeah. Instagram has carved out a nice subcategory for itself where it's a king within that category. And it used to be that it was Instagram and Snapchat kind of in that same category. That doesn't work long term. No. Especially not work. with a uh, heavily driven like technology driven categories. One one shoves out the other, and uh, and they they show in the book play bigger that the it, like especially in industries where it's tech driven, the category king ends up owning seventy six percent of the economics of a category, and so we're seeing that that shift right now. Well, look at this, Facebook owns well Facebook Messenger, they own WhatsApp, they own Instagram, obviously they own Facebook, right? Facebook Stories one hundred and fifty, Insta three hundred million, WhatsApp four hundred and fifty million, Facebook Stories seventy million daily users that's over a billion snapchat only 191 million so they live that is the 76 percent plus right there just mm -hmm. dom decimation of that of that side and with the storyline i think this is where i get so mike has helped me on instagram um i have like 70 well i'll tell you how many i have i went from like 2,000 followers it took about a month to month and a half hey fucker turn on um insta here it is. Okay, so he took me from about 2,000 followers and about 6,000. Fo I was following about 6,000 and followers about 2,000 and change. I now have 7,463 followers and I'm following 6,600 people. So the, the ratios are shifting to the right sides. Right, right. And his program helped me get there in a short amount of time. And the reason I tell you this is not for bragging rights, but it's the engagement that is staggering. Instagram stories, I'll have four to 500 every uh, views of every single story I do. Then I, I link those up so I could then parlay them over to Facebook stories. And I had like 15 to 16, 17 views in the beginning on Facebook. Now I'm getting 40, 50, 60 views on my Facebook stories because I'm teaching people to, that this is where they can see things. So mm -hmm. for all of us to be able to get ahead of the mailers and the, the, the calls and to get ahead of everything else, like we talked about, Matt, when we first started the show, I'm like, Matt, we're going to do advertisements everywhere. They're going to see us from the stars. And you're like, no, dipshit. No, 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 no. We're going to leave with content. I'm like, huh? And you're like, and I'm like, that's stupid. You're like, you're stupid. And then we had a bitch fight. And then, <laughs> then we had a girly slap fight. <laughs> Oh my! And nose pinch. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. Uh, but uh, oh. it really is by content and getting ahead in small snippets. And with what, what they're testing this in India, and they're testing this in I think they're just testing this in India right now. For the Facebook Stories, you don't have to do a video, and they're going to bring it over to the states. It's just going to be audio, short audio clips. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So do you link them together? Like low bandwidth. Low uh, bandwidth. Yeah, because that makes sense. Because anchor. The, the you know the anchor app you know they are they are more going for long larger audio podcasts that's kind of where they started off with snippets but they're now graduated into longer form content where face Facebook stories audio version will you can do 15 to 30, 15 second little snaps little chunks so you can do little thoughts in short little audio clips so you can get your voice across so like let's say you're sitting in their kitchen you got your hair up in a mm -hmm. bun and you're wearing your your, your jammies and you don't want, you're not ca camera ready. Well, that's cool, man. Just do audio clips. So it's going to have a little bit for everybody. Yeah, I think we're going to have to see a map before anything like that takes off because it, it, it's it's nice for novelty or whatever, but it's, it is a step down from video. And Anchor has tried it before and it didn't take off. Um, and the interesting thing is that I don't remember what the percentage is, but a good chunk of all videos viewed on Facebook are viewed with the sound off. So unless some major cultural shift happens and, I, and Apple is trying it with the ear pods, 
they're trying to get it in our these ear things. all the time. These things? The Air- AirPods. Oh, the AirPods. wireless. Yeah, these sorry, are wireless. AirPods. Yeah. AirPods. Um, sure, there you go. Well, you're holding up something, of lo- what looks like a plug with a cord on it. So what is it? Oh, this is where the AirPods Oh, go. it's the container where the AirPods go. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so until that becomes like a cultural thing where, you know, 60, 70 percent of the population or some something like that, unless there's a mass adoption of something like AirPods, I don't see something that's sound oriented taking off. At least, at least right now, which would be interesting. I mean, obviously, I'm in the podcasting business, so I'd love to see, you know, I want to see AirPods in everyone's ears, provided mm-hmm. their sound quality improves. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. Um, we were talking about uh, getting back to kind of where, where this ties in with the way real estate's being done. So we talked about, you know, cold call prospecting is, you know, now or in the very near future, either legally or culturally going to go the way of the dinosaur. No, Nobody yeah. our age or younger, ha- A, has a landline, no. B, picks up the phone when somebody they don't know calls. And that goes to a bigger point. Um, so you talk about like why Instagram is taking off right now. The, when a platform like this is like still early enough, what's happening is that people are kind of like open to like people they don't know and the novelty of the platform makes them kind of explore. I, Greg, how many people you know that are exploring on Facebook right now? Besides Bandito's tail? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Bandito. Thank you, Thank you for your wonderful cats, Greg. All right, buddy. All right. The, the great black cat, attack of the black cat. Bandito, Good Lord. This is, this is what you do. You come up here only when it's, hot, when it's podcast time, buddy. Don't you? You little show stealer. Um, <laughs> How many shot collar on that thing so fast and make your head spin? <laughs> don't you touch! Don't you touch my pussy! Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show up and install shot collars on both of your cats. All right. So point being, Instagram is in an interesting place where it's still it's big, it's big. So there's a huge audience and huge potential, but I feel like people are still open, right? So they're not flooded with direct messages yet. Right. They're not flooded with you know all the accounts that they don't like. Facebook, like we've already kind of like turned insular a little bit to the point where we are less receptive to new things. And so it takes a while for new things to take off. Like the, like things going viral on Facebook anymore, I don't think it happens as much. Growing brand new accounts, growing brand new profiles and stuff like that is a little bit more difficult because people are a little bit more closed. Like we get comfortable with the platform and the exact same thing is happening with the phone and we're seeing it with prospecting. Mm-hmm. We have turned insular and now we're starting to use the phone as a filter so that we don't have to talk to people that we don't know. Right. Guess what that opportunity is right now? It's social media. Social yeah. media is where people are open, and Instagram and platforms like Instagram and Snapchat is where all that's going. It used to be that we would pick up the phone if we didn't, didn't know who it was because it wasn't a big deal. Now that's a big deal, so we don't do that anymore. Facebook is getting less and less that way. Now it's more like Facebook is like, look, friends and family and your close people in business, that's what we're going to show you because that's what you've told us. That's what you want to see. Great. So mm-hmm. now Facebook is more insular. Yep. So Instagram and platforms like that and newer platforms are going to be where we're more willing to be reached out to by people that we don't know. So where I see things going is we need to be on those platforms because that's where people are open to meeting new people. And that's where, like, I, I find myself on in, in, you know, IG when I'm on there and I get a, a message. I'm not annoyed. I'm curious. And I'm wondering how yes. long that will be until I'm just annoyed. Yes. I'm like, ah, mother. Fucker, who is this? Gosh damn it! Click that ah, son of a biscuit face, and I, and I let him go. I, I'm, I'm still curious about what's happening. Even if I, and I'm starting to find more and more kind of botched attempts of marketing with in the DMs on IG. Oh, that's direct messages on Instagram for all of you folks that are listening. Um, now wait, wait, you're seeing more what botched? You said botched. botched, botched attempts of marketing. Like they, they're trying to make it come off as, as they wrote it, but they get into like the second sentence. And it's a sales pitch. And I'm like, and no more. Right. So if you're going to do messages on Insta or Facebook Messenger or anything like that, um, make sure that it's not, it's a value prop move, not a sales move. Build a rapport. And this is something that I'm working on. Matt and I were talking about the, an opportunity that's coming our way that, you know, how we're going to probably have to refunnel some stuff, which is totally fine. We just need to figure out how it's going to work. Um, and grow with content, not grow with salesiness. Because every single person that's out listening to our voices right now or watching our faces, you don't want to be sold, but you do want to buy. And it's it's walking that very thin line 
of knowing when you're too salesy and when to sell a little bit more. When people like Gene, I love the Vulpinator, the Bald the Evil Ninja, but he doesn't sell anything on our show. But people come to them, come to him for his services because they want to buy. And he, he's fine with it. The growth he's experiencing, he's loving. He's like, dude, yeah, I'm having a great time. So with you guys, when you're out on social media, it's okay to talk about what you do. Like we talk about having you guys join our EXP team. Go to bookmcdaniel.com, book 30 minutes, find a time. We'll see if it's a right fit for you. I'm not saying if you don't go to bookmcdaniel.com, never show back up to the podcast. I'm never saying that. That's selling. But I'm leading you to an opportunity saying, hey, look, if you'd like to talk, let's do it. And people are reaching back in a positive way with that. I just, I don't, it's just interesting to watch where it goes. And I think, Matt, what do they say? 2020 uh, is when they want to have all live video on Facebook. That's like the, what their goal is to go all, right. all live video. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I still think, I mean, people don't like to read novels, but we do like to read. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's a, it's you a like much, to read. <laughs> well, I, what, I, what I mean is that reading, and I don't mean reading a paragraph, I mean reading a sentence is okay. a lot easier and faster to absorb a sentence as long as you're as long as you're you know I'm like like Greg you're genu you might be genuinely dyslexic so yeah maybe it's a little harder for you I am genuinely dyslexic but <laughs> it's not for the, for the rest of us that can, for the rest of us that can just like I I enjoy reading and I get that but like I can look at a sentence on social media and I absorb the information faster than if I get that same content delivered to me in a five or ten second video. Does that make sense? You get it faster through reading it versus, yes, really. I, I'm the opposite. Yeah. Like if I hear it, I retain it. I've always yeah. been like that. And so it's yeah. just interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, I don't mind live video, so I'm prepared if it goes that way. I love to write, and would love to see platforms like Medium uh, do well, which favors all writing. Um, and I think there's always going to be a market for that. But yeah, I, I can't see Facebook going a hundred percent all live video, but we'll see. Um, that's not you know, really the point. Right. And I think that there's a, there's a distinct distinction here we need to make here. Nope. And again, guys, we're just standing up here, just blabbering like, you know, high school girls. So, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We're just you know, having a fun time chatting, but I, I don't think it'll, nothing will ever take the place of going face to face with another human ever. I think that, like, because our, my girl Veronica, knuckles to you, girlfriend, Veronica Jones right out here, guys. She is an absolute ass kicker of an ISA. I mean, bitch just take shit down. She took three listings in one week, almost $900,000 in, in product in one week. And what she did, she went to the house of an expired listings, was her sweet Southern self, and had them sign documents before she left. That is gangster, OG, straight up, you know, thug life right there. We should put like black glasses on a picture of her smoking a joint or something. Um, <laughs> with a bandana on. <laughs> Um, but going and seeing people, you can create the relationship and the initial conversation online through a messenger or anywhere else, but mm -hmm. then showing up at their house and just saying, like, I was talking to a gentleman the other day and, uh, he's like, well, what should I do about, you know, meeting these, you know, uh, you know, foreclosures or whatever else. And I'm like, or well, not foreclosures, uh, expireds and FISBOs. I'm like, go to their house. Bring them a little box of chocolates, bring them a, maybe a, like an RPR report, bring them a cost versus value report. If you guys go to costversusvalue.com, you can pick your region and the state and then the city that you're in, and it'll show you the amount of um, the cost it would be for different remodels in your house and the percentage you'll receive in your area on the sale of your home. Bring that to them. Bring a handwritten letter in case they weren't there, you know, with a, with a card inside, and make a personal connection with them. Because they know you online, but when they meet you in person, it's a completely different environment and experience. Yeah. I mean, shit. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's going to be, I mean, it's, it's going to shift to where we use social media to get comfortable with the people that we allow the permission to call us on the phone, video chat with us, and then meet with us in person. And, yeah, so I, I think it, gone are the days very, very quickly, I should say, where you can just pick up the phone. You run into somebody who's ready for a listing. They go, yeah, go go ahead and come on over, and and then you sign the papers. That will happen occasionally, mm -hmm. but the the odds of that are going to keep on going down because people are going to start using social media to filter out the people that they don't want to talk to, the people that they don't already know, and everybody already knows somebody who's licensed. So it's going to take 
We have to break through by adding value, putting out content, being a leader in the community, kind of being the digital mayor, like all those strategies that we've talked about in other contexts on the show. We talk about those things because that's what it's going to take to like break through the noise and start to build trust and relationship uh, with people over time so that when they do have that need come up, they think of us and not Bob from Remax, who's their cousin, right? Yeah. Their next door neighbor, their Doc Walker's uncle or whatever he is to mm -hmm. us. Because everybody knows a Bob from Remax. Everybody knows somebody. They're, they're in the absence of anybody better, they may work with that person. But if, we, if we've spent that time building the relationship with them and bring value and they consider us kind of like part of the same tribe because we're all on the same tribe on social media in some fashion, mm. um, it breaks down those barriers. It gives us a huge leg up, right? I mean, just knowing you're in kind of the same tribe, the same connection uh, to somebody is so huge. I mean, it just, it does something psychologically that's so incredibly important. Well, the reason why it's psychologically it, it, it's such a powerful thing because back when we were hunters and gatherers, our primordial brain, our crocodilian brain or whatever you want to refer to it as, mm -hmm. is that when, when we were a part of a tribe, that meant life. That meant we could survive, we could sleep. There were people over, we were watching us, when we, when, guarding us when we were sleeping and we all had our different things that we did in the tribe to, to survive. If you were to be kicked out of that tribe, that meant almost certain death. So that's why being a part of a tribe subconsciously is so important to us, and that's why we stay around people sometimes longer than we should be around people, because in, you know down to the very core of our essence and survival you know instincts is we've got to be a, a, a part of a crew, a group, a gang, you know our tribe, because mm -hmm. if you're on your own, I mean it's not that way today. We don't have a saber tooth tiger as we are you know hunters and gatherers. I mean we fucking drive cars and with electrical, you know, electric electricity in our houses and in water, running water. We're just fine on our own, but subconsciously we don't, we don't view it that way. Yeah. And that's why people don't, 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 don't want to step away from folks. But something that Matt, what I think here is a very unused, untapped asset as the, as this recording is taking place is that if you go to director.youtube.com, you can go get a YouTube certified videographer that will script, film, edit, deliver you a professional 30 second ad for your real estate team or your product or whatever it is. Then they'll have an ad director help you get the video in front of the right people to see it. And then you spend $350 a month um, in ad spend. And here the cool thing is if they don't watch the whole video or if they don't click to take action, you don't pay for that view and you get thir right. three seconds up front for free. So that's brand, 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 brand on the videos that are, that are out there on YouTube. And if they take action, they find value in what you are offering. Otherwise, they won't click on it. And then they already are warmed up to you because they want to move forward in some form or fashion with you. And I was just like, and I, now that my parents' house just got done painted and it's all back to being normal, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to sign one up for a podcast. I'm going to do one for our real estate team. Just put it out there. 350 bucks, guys. Think about how much value. Matt, how, what do you, how many views do you think that would be? I mean, we're, I know we're just speculating here, but I mean, 350? I mean, th th oh, thousands yeah. at least. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Impressions, I mean, if you want to call them that. Yeah. Yeah, impressions. Yeah. And that's just being in front of everyone. And if they take action, like I got a, we got a listing uh, two years ago from, where is it? Well, it's not the accurate one, but I mean, I had our, our team coasters. You know, and this is obviously the podcast coaster, but I had the team real estate coasters, and the guy just said, "Hey, come over and list my house." Why? Mm -hmm. Because I've been putting my beer on your face for the last six months. That's literally <laughs> what he said. <laughs> <laughs> putting my beer on your face for the last six months. That's right. All of a sudden, he hold, became, hold became a hick. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, well, but it speaks to something bigger, which is that it's the relationship, right? Even in those cases where it's more of a passive relationship where you may not know that they feel like they have some sort of a relationship with you, that's kind of the interesting thing about putting content out on social media is that there's people out there that we're not even aware of that they feel like they have a relationship with us because they're consuming our content and we don't know it. We don't see it. Like right. we can see some of you that, that log in and watch on Facebook Live, like it gives us your names and stuff like that. We can't see all of you. Um, so there's people that we miss that we don't give shout outs to. Um, and maybe that'll get better as we go along. Uh, the technology might get better till we can test, till we can tell who is consuming our content, who's clicking on everything, who's watching everything. Like that information at some point might be available, which would be interesting. But for at least for now, there's a whole kind of like we put stuff into the ether, and for the most part, we know maybe 
1% of who's actually consuming our stuff. Mm -hmm. There's all those other people that are consuming our stuff that they could, yeah, they can literally just randomly call up and say, Hey, I've been, I've been getting your videos now for two years, three years, or I follow you on Facebook. I see you all the time listing properties and doing open houses and running Facebook ads and stuff like that. I'd love to talk to you about putting my property up for sale. Like that stuff does happen. It does. Um, and it will happen more and more as people like shut themselves off from other forms of sales and prospecting. I had that call, call yesterday with uh, with two folks. Uh, one of them had been listening to us for a long period of time, and I got to meet him for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about coming over and join our EXP team, and it's just because of the content we've been bringing and the value we've been bringing, that's why they want to come over. And it was awesome. It was so bandito. Damn it, man. Go. Do, he's gonna come. Like, just come up here, dude. Jesus. Um, but they're going to most likely come over to our EXP team. Like, uh, Tara just joined us. Tara has been, Tara Sembrat, she's been my title rep for Chicago title for the last 18 and a half years. And so she just joined. I mean, it's just that, that, that trickle down effect and the value that you bring to people on a consistent basis, you know, that you just never know of. And that's mm -hmm. the cool part about having platforms like this and having the ability to go out there and talk to folks. And I believe honestly, Matt, that you may have been spot on, uh, you know, two or three years ago when, you know, we said, Oh, Jesus cat. Twice in one show. Um, that you said to bring the to bring the content, not the advertising. So if you guys aren't in if you guys are new in real estate, what's the value that you could bring to the overall um marketplace on a subject matter that would get people to engage with you? That's all we're looking for. Engagement. And if you just happen to let's say Matt's really good at writing. It's not very sexy. The drums. Matt's gonna talk about drums. And he's going to do a start a platform on Facebook Live on how to do drums. And he would do a little snippet on how to, you know, do a certain beat or something like that. But it's like, hey, this is Matt Johnson with EXP Realty. Hey, today we're going to talk about the snare drum and how to properly hit the snare drum. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm waiting with bated breath for whatever's going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> I can watch you. You're just like, how bad are you going to screw this up? That's right. <laughs> that's, like saying, that's like saying you bounce a hockey puck. You know, yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah. you know, but, it, you but know, no, you're right. And then you say you end it with, hey, guys, I hope you enjoy this, you know, this lesson on snare drums. Um, you know, again, this is Matt Johnson with EXP Realty. If you have questions about the drums or real estate, contact me at 402-661. <gasps> no, I'm not going to do it. Um, oh, you. you know, 5432. <laughs> Arne, Arne is watching. She says, Matt is very good at embroidery. Fantastic. <laughs> I was not aware of that particular skill that I have, but I, I appreciate that, Arne. I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives every day on how I'm learning embroidery. And crochet. Awesome. Oh, mm -hmm. man, there's going to be a pillow stack of the ceiling. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like uh, leveraging, talking about leveraging music, I was actually talking to my audio engineer this morning about this, uh, just picking his brain a little bit about, you know, business podcasts and if there's anything in the music space about, like, the behind-the-scenes business of music, the marketing of music and stuff like that, which has always fascinated me. Uh, so I think I'll end up doing a podcast in that space. And uh, so that, that, yeah, that's one of the things that I'm doing just to take the thing that I'm passionate about that, that I want to talk about and read about and think about and do content about anyway. Like that's, that's my passion and my hobby. So why not put content about that out there as well? Because it gives people another way to connect with me, even if they don't play. Now, ideally, like if I was in real estate, like actively in real estate, like I could leverage music by being super involved in the music space. Mm -hmm. building relationships with all the local studios, you know what I'm saying? Like I could help studio owners find new houses where they had mother-in-law you know, mother suites that would be good for recording studio spaces. Like there's all kinds of possibilities like that. Like you can really, like you can start small with just sharing what you can do and what you, what you know. Um, but man, go, go, the next step is then go bigger than that and start being kind of a leader in your community, but build like this little micro community around something that you're passionate about start putting out content around that and start building trust with a group of people that will use you at some point. The only question is when, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. imagine having one, 100, 200, 300, 500,000 people that look, they've already decided when I'm moving, I'm working with you. The only question is when, because then that the only challenge is just stay in touch with them. That's it. The trust yeah. is already built. The decision's already made. It's just now what's the timing and how do we get the opportunity to where it meets your expectations and you're ready to move forward? The thing, I, I'm a thousand percent, percent on board with you on that. The thing that where a lot of agents and just people overall fall down is consistency. 
when you're on IG, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Snap, when you're on, you know, Twitter and anything else, you guys, you have to be consistent about when you're going live and what you're talking about. Matt and I, you know, last year we were, you know, 11 o'clock Monday and Wednesdays and three, uh, well, we were th two or three o'clock in the afternoons um, on Monday and Wednesday and then 11 o'clock on Friday, we decided to shift everything to 11 across the board so everybody knows when we go live those three days and we're all, we hit it on the dot every day we go do a podcast. All right, when I do my mornings with McDaniel, 8.30 Pacific, I go live. You know what we're going to talk about. It's going to be something motivational, something, you know, growth oriented. And then the 4.30 show after yesterday, I think we're going to have to retweak the, or have to tweak the 4.30 show slightly um, for calls. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that people know what they're getting when they show up. So when you guys are going to do like this content that we're talking about here, write down what your superpower is, write down what you're really good about. And I hope it's not about real estate. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. it's no joke. I mean, I'm wearing, I'm a moving billboard for Lagunitas beer. I like beer, right? So it's why very not? Very apparent. Very apparent. But why not talk about beer? Why not? Crack a beer, yeah. talk about it, you know, really go deep on it, get people to engage with me. You know, mm -hmm. let's go back and forth. Let's talk about, you know, the, the different types of beers. What yeah, don't, like you, don't you already hold your Rockstar Connect events like at uh, like micro local breweries, micro breweries, stuff like that? I mean, you could get really intentional that way. You're, you could even throw an event at Lagunitas itself. Oh, my God, in Petaluma. That's only an hour and a half mm -hmm. north of me. Mm -hmm. Baby Jesus, I would need an Uber home. <laughs> yes, oh. you would. <laughs> but, I mean, just do things that you're passionate about, and then other people that are in your – tribe will surround you and and want to be a part of it because they're excited about it i mean if you like hiking do think about hiking if you like you know goldfish you know do something on goldfish what are you grinning at that's <laughs> i'm looking at the comments <laughs> between rna veronica jones and, and paul franklin about this whole this whole embroidery and needlepoint thing <laughs> All right. First of all, guys, if you do not watch the show live, we are live on Facebook, 11 a.m. Pacific, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It, 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 believe me, there's a whole other aspect of the show that you guys listening on iTunes are not privy to that take place in the Facebook comments on our live podcast. <laughs> and it's awesome. Um, it is yeah. pretty funny. It is anyway, definitely pretty funny. <laughs> I, I, was keeping my, I was keeping my eye on those comments, but um, I looked yeah. down. I looked down and I just saw you grinning. I'm like, what kind of shit storm is brewing down there? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, all, all, all good things. But anyway, go on, go on, Greg. Uh, I lost where I was going. Let's do it. Yeah, do, we have any, do, we, do we have any questions in there? Uh, that yeah, we let's. Uh, there, there were a couple that caught my eyes because we were caught. We were talking about Fizzbos earlier. Um, let's see. You talked about showing up. Um, you know, the best, the best way to build that relationship with them is to actually show up in person. So this is an interesting one from uh, Sarah and Brent Gooch. This says Fizzbo doesn't want me to come look at their house unless I'm bringing a buyer with me. And this is a pretty common one. Uh, you'll get this whether you show up in person, whether you call a FISBO on the phone, whether you mail them. Like their first thought is, look, just shut up and bring me a buyer. Yeah. Uh, so what's what's your response to that, Greg? Okay. Well, I mean, I, how can I, how, I, would, I, I want to bring you a buyer. I, I don't know what the inside of your home looks like. I would, can I come over for 10 minutes and just do a quick preview? It will just be me. Um, I'll be in and out just so that I can speak with accuracy so I don't misrepresent your home when I talk to buyers about it. Um, I won't try to sell you. I won't try to talk your ear off. I'll just come over super fast. I'll be in and out five, 10 minutes max. Okay. Because I'm, what the whole point is there is like, look, I can't sell something I don't know anything about. It's impossible. Okay. How am I supposed right. to tell them like the, the phenomenal, you know, upgrade with the granite and this, you know, the stainless steel appliances and just the way it, it's set up, or about the the hardwood floors with the inlays or the crown molding or whatever? I can't talk about it. You can tell me you have it, but I can't actually get excited about it. Mother, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on outside now? Oh, he's weed eating right weed below eating. me. Okay. Yeah, so mo Monday it was, uh, what was it, uh, leaf blowing? Leaf blowing. Leaf blowing, yes. And now it's weed eating. Fantastic. Like, All right, right, so someone so hacked me number to one, account. So number one, I'm going to have to kidnap both of your cats. I, so I might as well just hire a hitman because I'm going to have to take out both <laughs> your cats. I'm going to have to take out the, the leaf blower guy. I'm going to have to take out the weed eater guy. Probably take out the uh, the condo complex manager who's hiring these incompetent people who try to keep doing their job during the show. Um, oh so I'm just going to have to hire a hitman. So if you so, see somebody walking around dressed in all black who looks like they're Eastern European, I would recommend that you not bother them. That's my whole complex, bro. 
You got my whole complex of Eastern Europeans. <laughs> I told you, I think the, the, all the old mafia hitmen live here, so maybe yeah. we just oh, put, them, put something on the dark web and get someone in, in, in complex. Yeah, I was going to say, I just hire your next door neighbor to do it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so Jeff Smith says, are there any Instagram accounts to study that you suggest? That is a great question. Here's what I did um, in terms of going out there and finding <laughs> ones to, to study. So the first thing that I did is I, I looked for, number one, who are the influencers in my space, and I looked up to see if they had Instagram accounts. In some cases, they did, some they didn't, and then I would follow theirs. And then as soon as you follow somebody, it starts popping up suggestions, and you can scroll through those and see which ones catch your eye. That's a great way to kind of go deeper into one genre. Uh, for everyone who's in real estate, obviously, we always recommend Sarah Johnston's Adventures in Real Estate YYC. Um, and then uh, Rod... Uh, Watson. Sorry, Watson, Rod Watson here in San Diego is another good example. Very good at using like hyper local hashtags. Um, you can also check out Seth O'Burn, the O'Burn team uh, here in San Diego. They actually use a local Instagram agency that I might interview here in the coming couple of months uh, to grow their Instagram, uh, Instagram account. So they've got a really great looking account to where if you're out there and you're previewing nice looking homes and you're not out there in the dumps, but I mean, if like Seth O'Burn is doing like luxury listing, so if you're working like average to high end of the market, like you can have a really killer looking Instagram feed. Um, uh, so that there's some great ones like Seth O'Byrne is a good one to follow. I actually recommended that one to um, to Mike Lafito, who's a luxury agent in Chicago, as if he's going to jump into Instagram, that's like Seth O'Byrne is what he should model his Instagram account after. Uh, so if you're if you're in luxury, Instagram is a natural place for you. But that's where I would start. Start with those few accounts uh, and then. Um, uh, beyond that, just start looking at the ones that you follow where their aesthetic style is the taste that you want. I don't care if they're in real estate or not. Just look at the ones that have the, the certain photographic style that you like and follow them. And as soon as you follow them, uh, their suggested you know, other accounts that are similar will pop up right underneath and you can start checking those out. And that will lead you like further down the rabbit hole. Yeah, it, 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 it's visual porn essentially for, for, for just different real estate stuff and Model your just, but create an account the way you want your account to look. Put your stuff on there. Be honest and true to who you are and your style. A lot of times, people try to be somebody else. Like Sarah's is extremely Sarah. Her color, her quirkiness, her just weird little things that she does. You know, she shows herself out there. So figure out what you want to be seen as. For like we talked about before, Matt, on our shows. Um, you know, I need to put more strategic thought pattern into growing the IG account for myself. You have a plan set up uh, with headshots, you know, you know, photo shoots, um, what you want your stories, what do you want your posts to be like on Instagram, which will then carry over to your Facebook, you know, posts and stories. So it's creating the allure around you, but you have to figure out what the, what you want that to look like. That's right. Well, it just, yeah, I mean, guys, you go follow us. So I'm on, on Instagram as Johnson Needlepoint. Uh, that's where you can find all of my embroidery work, which I'll be posting endlessly about on Instagram. And then my oh, stories my are going to be like the in process. So you can actually see me. Like we're Oh, my God. I can just see you with a sweater hunched over on a rocking chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. With glasses just kind of hanging out the front of your nose like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving forward. All right, Veronica Jones says, so sick of the green screen headshots. Uh, Veronica, please elaborate, because um, we'd like to know a little bit more about what you mean by that. Uh, RNA says, uh, you know, don't stop with that, Matt. Like, the next is the pool boy. Um, no pool boy. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might have to take out the pool boy. Uh, so, yeah, we're basically just going to have to take out everybody in your complex, your condo area there, Greg, because this is a uh, – we have a show to do. This is ridiculous. I um, know. So let's <laughs> I'll just start. I'll just, I'll just collect water water balloons and just chuck them at them when they're down there. They'll never see yeah. it coming. All right. <laughs> like, well, let me throw one last question at you, and then we'll wrap things up. So this is from Kevin Kohler. He says, when I'm told uh, <clears throat> that someone has decided uh, not to sell their expired home anymore, and I bring this up because it's just a good uh, ob you know objection anytime you ask somebody about their plans. Uh, sometimes the response comes back, um, you know, well, that's a private decision or that's that's none of your business, right? So you, you try to ask a question and they basically throw it back like, hey, you know, that's that's a private decision. How would you handle that? Um, so let me get the, the scenario correctly. You and Julie and your three obese little insulin sucking, you know, troll babies have decided to take your home off the market, right? I call you and I'm like, hey, Matt, you know, I'm an agent with EXP. 
hey, I'm calling today. Uh, I see that your home uh, came off the market. Can you help me understand why? Is there a reason why you guys decided to come off the market? Mm-hmm. And your response yeah. is, well, that's a private, that's a private yeah, decision. Yeah, my response is, oh, that's, pri- that's, that's really, you know, I'm not comfortable talking about that. That's a private decision. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't mean to pry. Um, I was just curious. Um, I was going to try to come on out and do a preview, uh, and I was looking, I was gonna, your, your house was one of the homes I was going to specifically try to go take a look at. And I was just asking because uh, I may have a couple of folks uh, that are interested here in the area. Uh, just need to get in and take a, that's why I was going to do a preview. Um, I'm not saying I do have a buyer, but if it, if it does fit, someone I'm working with or will work with is there I was just wondering is it like are you guys just not going to move at all anymore or or did you just not find a place did you want to go or I was just trying to figure it out because I, I don't want to be I don't want to inconvenience you but I just want to still see if I can maybe help you sell the home it, did you see where I'm okay. going yeah yeah no I no I, I get it yeah and we're not um yeah I mean really you know we're, we're open let's put it that way I can't I won't go into detail but yes if you have a buyer okay just reach out that's fine Okay, cool, man. Is, is, would it be okay if I cruise by five, ten minutes max uh, today or tomorrow? Take a look at it, just so I can speak with the, you know, you know, with authority and, and about the upgrades you guys have, and kind of the layout in the backyard and the location and everything like that. Because uh, um, I don't want to misrepresent your house. I, and that's what, if I misrepresent is that the house, and I say I have someone, then they come through and it's not the fit for them. Then that's mm-hmm. just a, a, a disservice to you. And I just want to, I don't want to, I want to avoid that up front. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's, and we're talking five, ten minutes, and it's really five or ten minutes max, I might have time after I get off work tomorrow. Um, now, you're not wearing any beer uh, or alcohol-related clothing <laughs> gear, are you? Uh, I'm very, my wife is, uh, she's not, she's not a fan. She's not she's a fan. She's a recovering alcoholic, and the, that, that temptation is there. The good book says, do not tempt thy child. Uh, no, sir, no, I'm a, I'm a very, uh, I'm a, I'm not a drinker, uh, so no, I don't wear paraphernalia like that. Uh, at all i'll i'll be the one that's devilishly good looking um and dressed to the nines so yes i'll be i'll be there <laughs> good then yes you can stop by tomorrow at four o'clock and be the devilishly handsome one i'll keep an eye out for you uh, all right um okay so yeah that's that's good i like it there was a couple things that i like uh, in in terms of the phrasing there uh, but that's that's a good lesson, kind of how to turn that around and kind of set the expectations. Like, look, I don't want to like I love that line of I don't want to misrepresent your house. Like, hey, I've got a couple of folks I'm talking to that are looking in in your general area, and I want to talk to them about your house, but I don't want to misrepresent it because then they're going to get all interested and then find out it's not what they're looking for, and the whole thing ends up wasting your time and mine. Right. Um, yeah, it was it was it was good. I like it. It was pretty good. Well, he says, you're not a drinker. <laughs> Gail's like, you're not a drinker? <laughs> Lies. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely right. uh, Okay, but, going back to the, the headshot thing. So Veronica commented uh, and said that what, what she's noticed a lot, and going back to Instagram, is the typical headshot. Face forward, no character, shot in front of a green screen so that they can change kind of the, the photo up and behind the scenes. So I get that. Um, uh, on, on platforms like Instagram that are more informal, um, yeah, informal photography for your your Facebook like or your um your headshot photo is probably going to work better. It's going to catch the eye more. It's going to be more in keeping with what people expect to see on Instagram. So yeah, it makes total sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Veronica's thing here. Said you know said come by and see a house anyways. And, you know what, uh, would it hurt if I still drop by to look around for the future? You know possible listing. You know I don't yeah, think that's it's a good point possible too. listing, but just you know would it hurt? I I always say would it offend you if I potentially mm-hmm. would come by and take a look at your home so I don't miss so I wouldn't misrepresent you. Mm-hmm. And the key phrases are would it uh, would it offend you? Yeah. I mean if they're gonna get offended for you just coming by, uh, bye Felicia. Fuck. <laughs> I can't do anything to help you, man. <laughs> yeah. I really can't. Yeah. So, uh, guys, with everything that we've talked about here in today's show, there, there's a lot of content here. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, I want you guys to, in the comments here, I want you guys to continue this conversation, chatting back and forth with each other. Also, if you think of a scenario on how you can do future marketing now, and on the different platforms, like a combination of this Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube, YouTube, director.youtube, you know, do, doing live on Facebook, doing face Instagram lives, you know, going then going out to people's houses or getting in front of folks. What would you bring with them there? Would you bring stats about your Facebook and Instagram accounts? Like if you were, if Nick Sackis is still here, uh, go to his you know, Facebook group. Was that real estate marketing rock stars? Mm-hmm. You got real estate, real estate marketing rock stars. Go watch what Nick is doing. He's extremely 
good. I mean, he's extremely good of getting eyeballs onto stuff that he does. And you can buy a program that he has. I think you still buy it. But uh, for a couple hundred bucks, you can get tens of thousands of people liking and following your Facebook uh, business accounts. Then you can take a screenshot of that and say, hey, look, just to, so you know, circle it. Uh, we have 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 people that like and follow our Facebook account to get all the notifications when we bring new properties on. Uh, that might be of interest for you for trying to sell your home. Wouldn't you think, sir? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. You know, so help us formulate what might work well. I know Gail's here on Knuckles BFF. What up, girlfriend? Uh, she is an absolute genius on how to use uh, send out cards. Go to her. Don't don't message her. The woman is busy. But go to her Facebook uh, Facebook account or, or group. And Gail, please put the link in here so people can go to it and go learn from her on how to do um, uh, how to do send out cards. It's such a simple thing for like 100 bucks or 98 bucks or something. You can send like endless amount of cards every month. I mean, you could send 50 cards a day if you wanted to. Still 98 dollars a year. I mean, an opportunity unbelievably huge so i wonder if we could do i wonder if there's digital send out cards that you can then take a link to and then put them into 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 the social media realm gail are they and that would be really interesting if you could send a send out card but through instagram or through facebook messenger so they can open up a link same thing they get the card on the front they open it up they get the images they get the whole information but you don't have to put a stamp on it but they just get it hmm. interesting there it is guys so she just put the link in here so yeah she does i mean this this facebook group and i mean i i always go watch what she's doing in here it's called realtors business on referral and send out cards so go to that link you will thank yourself sure i promise i'm lost in this all right um and uh so for the show oh, uh shit, make sure subscribe and rate and review and share and all that good stuff. We want to thank you for that. Um, I'll let Greg talk in a second, but first let me just say that uh, we, we just want to, uh, uh, we want to thank Jeff Cohn uh, and um, his live stream program. Uh, all of our team members get that for free, but if you're not a member of our team, you can still go get it for ridiculously cheap at 17 bucks a month. And what it is, is it's Wednesday, Friday, live high def trainings, in-depth trainings for agents like you. So every Wednesday, they'll go super deep on a specific topic like buyer consultations, open houses, things like that. And then that Friday is all about dialogue, scripts, and role play related to that topic. So each week, they'll go deep, like deep dive on one thing and then go scripts and dialogues to help you implement exactly what you learned. So ridiculously inexpensive for extremely good quality, like really, really high quality training for agents. It's very, very good. They are on point. Those trainings are phenomenal. So go check that out. That's at EliteRealEstateSystems.com. You just click on live stream. You can learn about it. You can see all the topics, see the whole curriculum for the year. You can see previous episodes so you know exactly what it looks like. It's all interactive, so you can actually join, and you can comment and get your questions answered within the flow, just like if you were in Jeff's office. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to thank Wise Hire. So if you want to put talent on your team, if you're looking for salespeople, admin people, whatever the case is, use them because they're going to write up template ads for you uh, that are already in their system that you can post out. You can start generating leads for your team, and it'll put them through the disk profile and tell you who matches up, which is phenomenal. So we always recommend them. So that's why it's higher. Greg, how do people learn more about our team? Go to Book McDaniel right now. Right now. Right, right, right now. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. There you go. Good job. Okay. Now that you're there, now that you're at bookmcdaniel.com, I want you guys to sign up for a 30-minute consultation, figure out if we're the right team for you. You know, figure out, we're going to see everything the, of the value, you the Kim Kardashian ass of value on the back end here, just jiggling of goodness. Um, yeah, yes. Offended Matt again. Um, but what it is, guys, is it's, it's what everything Matt talked about. You're going to get all of our products. We're going to put you also into Hank Avick. We put, him in, put you into 36 to Life right off the bat into that. Then you get our you know, rock star conversations. Where it's an eight- or nine-week program right there. You guys are going to get everything we produce now and in the future. Uh, if you guys, once we get an inked with Mike, um, you're going to get a free month of his services building up your Instagram. And then there's a way to continue that uh, at no cost. We can talk about that as well. It's so simple, guys. It's, it's mind-numbingly simple. Um, also, you have private coaching abil abilities with me. Um, I, I, I put a link out uh, every Monday on our on our every Tuesday or every, every Monday with the four days that week that you can book a six o'clock call with me at Pacific Standard Time to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, you can book time with Matt in fifteen-minute increments about strategies and team building. 
Um, we do a mastermind call on Monday mornings. Um, we do, there's just a ton of value we put back there and we can learn all about it in that 30 minute call. Also how you guys can make three different levels of income using EXP. And I mean, it's easy. It's, it's typical commissions, passive income, and then stock options, which by the way, we just went IPO and we were traded, traded on the NASDAQ. We went from $13 to $19 yesterday. Oh, nice. no. Yeah. So hello like just, value. Yeah. I was going to say, and I can buy your, uh, well, you can buy a lot of 24 packs with that, but yeah. All right. <laughs> That's not what you should be buying, so stop that. All right. Guys, we just All want right, to thank you. We love you for sharing the show, watching, participating, commenting. Um, make sure uh, just if you guys have uh, questions in advance for the show, you can actually uh, put them in the lead gen subscription objections group. Uh, that is run by our good friend Aaron Wittenstein. It is almost at 50,000 members, so if you know of anybody in your circle that would benefit from being a part of that community of people who support each other and help each other overcome objections and take more listings and, and buy our clients, uh, invite them to join. Uh, we keep an eye out and we're active in that group, and it's a great way to, uh, to get your questions answered and provide value to other people that you know that are in real estate. And uh, with that said, I think that's yeah. it. And guys, Gail just posted in the comments a link to send out cards. If you guys want to click on that, you can do like a free card or some shit. I don't know. Click on the link and go have fun. Uh, but if you don't, that's cool too. I still love you. Kisses and hugs. But we love you. We do this because we love you. You guys are amazing human beings. Um, it is more than it's more than you can ever imagine, Matt, what Matt and I get out of doing this when we get to see someone succeed. That's mm -hmm. the true value. When we get to talk to somebody and they're like, dude, because of this conversation or that person you got on or this idea that you guys brought brought to the show, I was able to do X, Y, and Z with, dude, goosebumps and you know all kinds of crazy shit to just the, imagine the ripple effect that we're being able to have for the show. So we're never going to stop. But I also ask you guys to please pay it forward. Go out there and do something awesome for another human being in real estate or out of real estate, but just be a positive light in the world, in this industry. Yeah, you know, just to pay it forward and continuing continuing the goodness. But enough of my voice, Matt. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a bow on this thing, and you better pick a mother good color this time, okay? So pick a good color. <laughs> oh wow, well, man, no pressure there. A good color. A good color. A good color. Good color. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he's scrubbing his chin like he's really thinking, but he's not. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Gray. It's not. Yeah, I'm looking at what I'm wearing. It's all mon It's all monotone. Um, no, let's go with uh, let's go with royal blue because I feel like it, Greg. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, royal blue it is. Royal blue. On the bow for the show. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace out, ninjas. We got.